Well, you try to write this. I mean, I actually wrote the, a week in review about it, you know, about the sectarian system that was being, and I don't think anybody read it. I mean, I just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it wasn't all that interesting when I read it. I was like, I probably should have, you know, and I, I tell you, part of me, it's kind of, I don't know, I shouldn't probably say this, but it, it's part, it's so, I get so frustrated not, you know, you see these bigger forces at work, but as a journalist, I think you have to find the narrative to tell that story, otherwise you can't tell it. And, you know, you might try to do it in the week in review in the New York Times. Um, but I'll tell you, I mean, the, the story that I found, you know, I got very frustrated in August when there was all this talk about the administration of combat ending in Iraq. And it's just, it's just, it's silly and it was ridiculous. And we all knew they were lying and, you know, you try to write it as much as you can in the story. But anyway, that, the paper wanted to use that as an, as an occasion to tell, tell a legacy story, like what are we leaving behind kind of idea. And my, the story I got, this is one of the few, few instances where I got assigned a story, and the story I got assigned was death basically, you know, what were the costs of this war? And I knew that, you know, I could try to weigh in on numbers, I could try to like do something authoritative, somehow to really take, <coughs> understand what happened, and I just feel a weariness on the part of readers, on the part of Americans about death and numbers in Iraq, and I ended up doing a, a very long story just on one family trying to find their son, trying to tell the story that way, and I actually think it was more effective, and I don't know if it's becoming, you know, older, became more cynical, but, you know, I think when I first started as a journalist, I really did want to, like, you know, in some ways, like, translate scholarship into, you know, into the newspaper. And I feel like at this point in my career, I've gotten to the point where I, I think that I'm only going to relate to my readers about the stories that I care about if I can, if I can find the right story to tell. Mm -hmm. and it's, a, it's a different approach, definitely. Um, have you found yourself, I mean, as a scholar, over, like, since we were students in Cairo, have you found, like, the approach, like, how you see your work, like, the goal of your work is changing? Uh, yes and no. I mean, what's interesting is now with, you know, blogs and other outlets available. So, Merup, I write these online pieces for Middle East Report, which are, you know, essentially, you know, 4,000 words. Essentially, if I added a nice theoretical framework and lots of citations, it could be a journal article. Right. But I can do them quick. I don't have mm -hmm. to, I can, you know, get rid of all that, just say what I want to say. I don't feel like the arguments are simplified in any way. Um, and they can reach a much larger audience and much more quickly. Right. Um, but it's a different kind of writing in some ways. You know, you're writing to make a timely point about something that happened last week or last month, what's going on now. And it's written for, um, you know, s uh, scholars and students and also for journalists. Initially, the Middle East Report Online was created to try to reach journalists, to give them, you know, who are thirsty for some alternative framework, to give them something bite-sized, digestible, but really meaty and a different take on things. Um, and I think we've had a lot of, er, Merip has had a lot of success Absolutely. with that. But, um, with that and then, uh, you know, blog pieces we can write, which are, you know, closer to 1,000, 1,500 words. I mean, you know, for scholars, 500 words is an abstract for a 10,000-word huh. article. So right. writing 1,500 words isn't just, it, it, it takes a skill to learn to write well, to decide what to say, you know, how many points you can make. Uh -huh. um, partly the way I was trained, my, you know, general approach, which is, you know, pretty ethnographic but in very interpretive. There's all these sort of qualifications and gray areas, and you can't do that when you're writing in a short piece right. because it's just going to be all, you know, digressions and no point. Yeah. And so it's actually taken, you know, I've had to learn how to write in that way, and I've only done it a few times. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I prioritize, but it's very different from the book that I've been writing, which, you know, is going to cover uh, protests and policing in Jordan from 1946 basically to the present. Wow. And I've been doing interviews on it for years and interviewing security and protesters and lawyers and reading law and learning about law and now learning about political geography so that I can write this book. Uh -huh. I'm not really approaching that book differently than I did, you know, my very first book. Right. But there's other ways to talk about the region, um, which I like. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm happy to have those outlets so I can say things when I'm frustrated or I have a point, a small point that's <coughs> not worth fleshing into something huge, but to right. say, no, you're getting this wrong. True, Let yeah. me say it. And you, there's places to get it out. And so that's really changed in terms of how I, I think about what it is I want to say. Right. I think I have more options for saying things. And I think that's, I mean, that's something that's new the past 10 years. I mean, just, the, you know, again, uh, you wonder, I mean, I, you know, because there are so many different, uh, you know, platforms and ways to, to, you know, to, to discuss the Middle East, to talk about the Middle East, to, you know, to delve into these. Actually, it, it, it's been in some ways much more critical of, you know, mainstream media, which is a good thing, absolutely. I mean, I think um, in some ways it's made it a much richer environment and a, and a healthier environment. And then I come back to that question we were talking about earlier, then why, you know, why is it that it's, do I just, I mean, uh, I'm kind of haunted by this idea that, you know, it does seem to be a less informed public than, you know, than the beginning. I'm not... I just don't know the, how to, I don't know the answers to that.